Okay, so for today's session, what we're going to do is uh, we'll probably start out by clarifying uh, where we sort of left off in the last session with a couple of the problems out of the book and try to make sure you're real clear on those. And then, uh, so that'll be wrapping up our discussion on relative velocity. We want to move into the area of relative acceleration. As I said, the mathematics is pretty similar to what we've been doing with the relative velocity, except it's just a little more complex because of the extra terms in there. But there's a nice little technique that's illustrated in the book, and there's a couple problems assigned to you dealing with what's called the instantaneous center of zero velocity that you're going to find a very handy little tool to see if you're on the right track as you write some of your vector velocity uh, equations. Okay, so let's get going with a problem that we, I don't think we ever totally finished it the other day. And it was this mechanism. Here's the wording down here, and I will bring this up so it can be seen better. We have a <coughs> pin in a rotating arm OA, which engages the slotted link and causes it to rotate. Show that the angular velocity of member CB is half of of OA regardless of the angle theta. And here's the image associated with that problem. <coughs> okay. Now, did we wrap this one up in class? No. Hmm? Yeah. But what I want to do is I want to show you a vector approach to this one which I, I'd actually put it up on the board to get started on it, and then I decided it was going to take us a little too much time to do it by the vector approach. So I backed off uh, in the last session, but I'd like to actually go through that with you so that, so that you're feeling comfortable with it. And then we'll come over and uh, tackle problem 89, which is where we'd left off in the last session. Okay. So recall that this mechanism had a guide pinned on the left edge at C with some angle theta. And in that was object, was pin B, or pin, I called it P, I guess. And it was pinned about a point down here called point O, I believe. And we went through a discussion. This was called 2 theta. And I believe we actually went through a discussion and um, came up with the final result showing that the omega of member CB was equal to half of omega of OP. Is that correct? We did finish that? Yeah. Okay, good. So the, the approach I want to take on this with you is that vector is the vector approach. So pin P is is in a circular motion arc, as we discussed earlier, about point O down here. That's pretty comfortable for everyone. And the mechanism had given, I believe it had given us an omega of O of this member. Is that right? They'd given us the omega of this member? Yes. Yeah. Okay, right. So this member they had called, they put an extension on this out to A, and so they called that um, OA in the book. I'm calling it OP. So that's the motion, circular about point O. The motion about point C of the coincident point, we, I call that P prime, it is etched on here right at where P is momentarily. 
And so it's momentarily in motion about point C over here. So it's following this circular path, P prime. So those two points are coincident with one another. So when you have, when you have an object sliding or in motion on another object, which is what pin P is doing, this is a handy technique to use. So we also discussed the fact that if these angles open up, in other words, this arm sweeps omega O P sweeps in the direction shown here, then that's going to move the pin up over here. If that pin moves up over here, then you can see that the etch point, from the etch point, the, there is a velocity term as these points separate that tends to grow. So the length, that, that dimension starts to increase from zero here, it opens up, and so there's a relative velocity then that's along this line CB, along the line CB. And <clears throat> what I'm looking at is the direction I want to write this. I want to draw an arrow from P towards P prime. So that's going to be an outward directed vector. And I don't know if you can see that very well right there. It's going to be this direction outward from C towards B. And that's going to be the velocity of P prime relative to P as this angle opens up. The reason I wanted to look at that is because the way I wrote my solution up is I wrote the following. I said that the velocity of P prime is equal to the velocity of point P plus the velocity of P prime relative to P. Now, let's go through writing the detail out. P prime is in rotation momentarily about C, about point C. So it's carrying, <coughs> it's carrying an omega cross R. So this velocity term right here is actually made up of the omega of this member, I'll try to keep my symbols the same, BC crossed with R of P prime relative to point C. Does everybody feel good about that? P prime's in rotation on the colored, colored arc here about point C. So it's going to be an omega cross R velocity. Over on the other side of the equation, we have the velocity of P. Now P is in rotation about point O down here. So it similarly has an omega cross R, but it's a different omega. And so this length, remember, is what is, this was an isosceles relationship between the supports here, B, and then from O up to P. So it's a distance B away, and it's traveling with an omega of OP. Okay, so that term is itself an omega cross R. It's the omega of member OP crossed with R of P relative to O. Well, P relative to O is what? It's of length B, and it's pointing from O towards P. So it's length B, and it's pointing from O towards P. And so that's going to be a cosine of 2 theta term and a sine of 2 theta term. So cosine of 2 theta I plus sine of 2 theta J. So that's the velocity of P, that combination. Is that right? Any confusion? Everybody all right? Okay. Now we have to add this guy in. This relative velocity, these are our two coincident points. 
And so we look at these arcs and we can, we can say that, oh, okay, this relative velocity term, as I've shown right here, is pointing from C outward towards B. From C outward towards B. We don't know its magnitude, but it does exist. It's non-zero, and it's got that direction. So we have to add onto this right side velocity of P, we have to add onto that the unknown magnitude of P prime's velocity relative to point P times the direction of member CB. And the unit vector there is going to be cosine theta I plus sine theta J. So there's our equation. Right. So now let's go ahead and write out the detail. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to get rid of the notes because that always just distracts things. Okay. <clears throat> so omega BC is assumed, un we don't know its magnitude, but it's assumed positive out of the board. So it's an omega BC, I'm going to move over here so I have a little more room, K crossed with this position vector of P prime relative to point C. P prime relative to point C. This is an isosceles triangle, isn't it? And remains isosceles right here. So what I'd like to do is to get this length so I don't have to mess around with it. And then I can just use the, my direction associated with the angle theta here. So the length of this, as we've done numerous times in the past, is B cosine theta doubled. B cosine theta here and a B cosine theta there. So we end up with 2B cosine theta is that length of B up to P prime. So that's what we're trying to write. This relative, relative position vector is length 2B cosine theta in the direction of cosine theta I plus sine theta J. So that's our left side expression expanded. Over on the right side, we're ready to take our cross products. We're ready to take our cross products. And I like to do that either using thinking I, J, K, like we've spoken of before, in that fashion, or thinking of X, Y, and Z coming out towards us and using my right hand to determine those cross product terms. So let's do our left side cross product and then we'll go over and take care of the right side cross product. So if I'm looking for the I combination here, it's going to be, it's going to come from K cross J. K cross J, if you look up at either one of those, K cross J is backwards on the rotation, so that's going to be negative I. So it's going to be a negative K cross J is I'm going to pick up a Omega B, uh, 2B Omega BC cosine theta sine theta I. Combination of this magnitude times this coefficient times sine, and we assign a negative to the I component. K cross I. K cross I is in the correct order for the rotation. That's going to give us a positive J term. So we're going to end up with a positive J term here. K cross I is going to be a 2B omega BC cosine, the cosine theta squared J. Double check my math on this as we go. <coughs> Let's go to the other side of the equation where it's actually a little simpler. 
the other side of the equation. Similarly, we're going to take unknown, uh, the omega OP, K, I, I can, you have a K on here, right? Okay, so we're going to go K cross J again. K cross J is negative I, so that's going to give us a negative B omega OP sine of twice theta, and that's, the, that's an I term. And then similarly down here, our I term right here is this unknown magnitude, velocity of P prime relative to P, cosine theta, I. So those two terms on the right side are our I components. Okay, our J components are going to come from K cross I. Once again, K cross I gives us J. <coughs> so we're going to get a positive term here and a positive term here when we do our, uh, or actually, we're going to get positive term on this cross product and we're going to get a positive term there. <coughs> so we're plus the B omega OP cosine twice theta and we're going to be adding to that the velocity of P prime relative to P times the cosine of theta. Those are our J terms. So, we have a giant vector mess here. We get the sines and cosines right on the, on the P prime to P velocity. Here? Yeah, when you transfer them down to the next step. This, this term right here? The next step down. Well, the I term is this which is right here, and the J term is this. Which is? Which, thank you. Good catch. Anybody else see that? Thank you. Good. It's always nice to have more than one set of eyes on this. Anything else? <clears throat> I think we're good. Okay. How are we going to, what are we going to do? I mean, remember where we're going? <laughs> No, <laughs> we want to we want to show that this thing up here is true. The fact that member CB is moving at half the rotational rate that uh, OP is. That's our objective, and we've got this thing. <clears throat> so. I think what we should do is write the expressions for the I information separately from the J information and then see where we can go from there. So if we take the I information and, <clears throat> okay, well, you can sort of see it. Here it is here and there it is combined over there. Now what I'm going to do, this, this I piece, I component is going to be equal to that I component, right? We don't want that velocity of P prime relative to P in our picture, in our system. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm thinking about this term being equal to that coefficient of I hat over there, and I'm going to solve that equation for V prime, V of P prime relative to P. So V prime, or I'm sorry, V of P prime relative to P is going to be equal to this term, bringing this term over to the other side, becomes positive, and so we're going to get a positive B omega OP sine twice theta minus 2B omega BC cosine theta sine theta. I'm going to reverse those and write it sine theta cos theta. divided by what? Cos theta. Cos theta. Uh, 
I'm going to now do the same thing with the J term. Here's the J term. It's equal to this J term, and I'm going to solve it for the velocity of P prime relative to P. So we're going to get that that is going to yield V of P prime relative to P is going to be equal to this positive term, 2B omega BC cosine squared of theta minus B omega OP cosine of twice theta all divided by what? Sine theta. Sine theta. Where do we go from here? This is from the I information, and this is from the J information. <clears throat> well, if we set these equal to each other, well, well, this and this are equal, <laughs> right? And so that way we eliminate this velocity of P prime relative to P, which we're really not interested in. Y direction? But those are magnitude. No. No, we're direction. equating. See, what, we have one big vector equation back here and with a number of different variables. And what we're doing is simply saying, let's equate the I components, which is what this equation is, and write this term as a function of this stuff. And then similarly, separately, take the J components and equate those. They're orthogonal to each other. And so we're able to then, we now have two scalar equations involving these variables, and so then we can take these, these items and equate them one to the other. Okay. When we do that by equating these two, notice that each term over in, in these expressions include the value B, length B. So B divides out of that. B disappears, letter B disappears. And we're just left with the trig expressions involving the omegas and theta. So if we do that, we get omega OP sine of twice theta minus twice omega BC sine theta cos theta, and that's divided by cosine theta. And I'm going to alter this in just a moment for convenience. Is equal to then the expression on the bottom down there without the value b in there. And so we end up with twice omega uh, bc, the cosine squared of theta, minus omega op, cosine of twice theta divided by sine theta. What I want to do is I want to multiply both sides by sine theta and co sine theta cos theta to clear the fractions. So that's going to stick the sine theta up as a multiplier out here and leave the cosine theta as a multiplier on the right side. So just clearing the fractions. So we're going to end up with a sine theta term over here times this, and a cosine theta term over here times that, and that gets rid of the fractions in here. Okay. Now, what can we do at this point? I guess we're just going to have to distribute this stuff. And you should recall that the sine of twice theta is twice sine theta cos theta. That's useful. And this shows up, as I've said before, many, very frequently in engineering. So you should know that identity. That's an important one. 
And so then we distribute this, and it looks like we end up with an omega of OP times 2 with a sine squared theta cosine theta term minus twice omega BC sine squared theta cosine theta equals on the right side doing the distribution 2 omega BC cosine cubed theta minus omega OP and there's a cosine 2 theta times cosine theta. Now, let's look at this for a second. There's some trig identities associated with cosine of 2 theta. The standard way most people remember that is it's cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta for cosine twice theta. That's another one that's useful to remember. If I'm looking at the expansion that's going on here, over here I'm seeing a sine squared theta times a cosine theta with omega OP. And that is going to show up similarly here in that product. So what I'm thinking might be useful is to come in here. Let's see. I'm trying, and then I'm, I'm looking for a cosine cubed. Ah, there's a cosine cubed showing up right there. Maybe I'll just go ahead and take this form of it, of that identity, and multiply that cosine on into those terms. I hope you're with me. So we have the minus omega OP. Now we're going to have two terms showing up with that. There's going to be a cosine cubed theta on there. And then we have an a minus omega OP with a, oh, that becomes plus, doesn't it? Minus the minus here. Becomes plus sine squared theta cosine theta. Now, does anything tidy up? Looks like we have a similar term here and over here. So if we move those over to one side here, it looks like we end up with, <coughs> excuse me? They're both positive. So oh, no, but one is twice the other. So One's yeah. twice the other, so we bring one over this way, and we end up with just one of these terms. Excuse me? There's a cosine common to everywhere. Oh, there's a common cosine everywhere. So you can cancel cosine. Thank you. I like that. Common cosine everywhere. So that's going to knock this exponent down to a 2. It's going to knock this one down to a 2, and it's going to knock that one out. And now, taking these two mark, these two terms that are marked with checks, we bring one over and we end up with only one of them over here. So we have an omega OP sine squared theta. Okay. And then, oh, look at this other term involving omega OP. Let's bring it over and it becomes positive. Omega OP cosine squared theta. Feeling good? And then if we take the other terms involving omega BC over to the right side, we have a, oh, I like this. This is looking good. Omega BC cosine squared theta plus twice omega BC sine squared theta. And you all should see what I'm seeing at this yeah. point. And go Common factor down. here pulled out, leaving sine squared plus co squared, which is your identity of 1. So you end up with an omega OP over here. Similarly, over here, you pull out a twice omega BC as a common factor. You got a co squared plus sine squared, which again is 1. So here's the final result.
Okay. That's life in the fast lane using vectors. Okay. Okay. This, yes. Would it be preferred to work out the way you had originally? Just 